my name's Sally Cutler and I'm a medical microbiologist and I've got a special research interest in ticks and tick-borne diseases. Hi, this is Saeed Sharif. Uh, I'm consultant in artificial intelligence and medical technology and uh, I'm the leader of the Intelligent Technology Research Group at the University of East London. Ticks are sort of probably one of the best of nature's vampires. They feed on blood exclusively and um, they're actually related to spiders so normally they've got eight legs but they go through different stages of their life cycle so an egg will hatch and a little baby larval tick will come out from that egg and at that stage it's only got six legs and that larvae will have one blood meal and after that blood meal it'll drop back off into the undergrowth and it will then molt into a nymphal stage of tick and it gains an extra pair of legs during that molt process so then it's got eight legs again it has one blood meal and then after that it'll again drop into the undergrowth and molt and become either an adult male or an adult female and again it needs a blood meal and after that the, the mating will happen and if it's a female it'll lay eggs which will eventually hatch and the life cycle goes round again. Ticks have actually got a good way of sensing when a lightly host, something with blood for their blood meal, is going to be around. And when they're hungry and the, the climatic conditions are conducive for ticks to actually go and find a host, they will climb up to the top of a blade of grass or onto a, a piece of bracken or something like that. And they have got CO2 sensing devices that are on their two front legs and they sit there at the top of their blade of grass with their front legs out to sense a CO2 trail and if an animal giving off CO2 brushes past they can then use their claws to sort of attach to the fur of that animal or the clothing of a person and um, then they will wander around until they find a place that is good for them to attach and it takes them quite a while to actually sort of dig their mouth parts into the skin because they, they have to stay attached for several days and sometimes even weeks and so they, they dig their mouth parts in and insert the mouth parts and they will then stay attached for as long as they need to get their blood meal. The current project, which is AIM TBD, um, this project is actually designed to use the complicated knowledge that we're acquiring to actually look to see whether we can use that information to actually develop a system by which we can actually identify high-risk areas for tick-borne disease, but also so that we can look at the, the complex factors that actually influence where ticks are beginning to expand and new expansions of ranges where we're finding ticks. We are aiming to develop an innovative system using the power of artificial intelligence to tackle and predict the spread of the ticks and uh, we want to actually train this system based on several multi-dimensional data sets uh, acquired from the tick and from the climate environment uh, to help build a better prediction for the tick and we are aiming actually to uh, assess and understand the behavior of the tick and how they can survive and spread uh, utilizing the multifactorial uh, parameters that can influence the spread of the ticks. And actually, one of the key aim of this project is to help our stakeholder as well uh, using this system to predict the high risk area for the ticks, for example, and see how we can, a specific set of parameters can influence positively or negatively the spread and the risk of the ticks. We are going to use 
and collect data and the data will be collected from the tick and the parameters around it and we are going to collect the data from the UK and through our uh, European uh, partners and this data sets we are going to uh, its multi-dimensional data sets of course and it has several sets of parameters and as you know AI is hungry for data and the more data we provide for our machine learning based system the better and more accurate prediction and the system and the model that we are building will be trained on this massive uh, data sets and this will help actually the AI system to predict the risk and which area is associated with that risk of the tick. And uh, such a system actually, uh, the good thing about it is uh, learning as we go. So the more data, if we discover during our data collection process that more barometer could be tested, so to see the influence of the climate weather, for example, on the spread of the tick or the, any associated risk of the tick, this can be added to the system to compare how the AI is able to respond and how our intelligent model is actually helping the stakeholders to predict accurately uh, the risk of the tick and the spread of them. The key parameters that we will be looking at is, first of all, the environment parameters. Uh, these will look at uh, uh, the rain, uh, forecast uh, and the area and the temperature and a specific time because the spread of the tick actually the tick sometimes uh, go active at a certain uh, time at a certain temperature so all these details uh, that's why I said it's a multi-dimensional data set so we are now studying uh, these details to feed them to, to the AI system. It's like, again, uh, the AI, the more data, the more barometer you give, then it will be able to tell you when and where the risk is associated with these types of ticks. It's a very interesting project. Uh, it is innovative uh, using the latest uh, innovative uh, artificial intelligence technology. We are aiming to have an interface uh, for the user and which can be connected based on the cloud. We can use as well an app where you can see where's the area of the risk. So all this massive data is gathered in one platform and then this platform can be presented using an app on your phone uh, to see, okay, this area is associated with the high tech at this time, at this point, at this hour. Uh, it's like when we have high tide. Uh, uh, so the coastal uh, agency will say, okay, don't go to the coast at this point. Uh, we are aiming to do something like that uh, nationally and internationally, particularly through our uh, coast network uh, European partners. And our idea is to put in an application for follow-on funding and we will do that once we've got some good preliminary data and hopefully it'll snowball and we'll be able to keep our research going and look not just at the, the tick that's primarily causing a problem in the UK but to look at different types of tick species because there are other tick species that we, we can see spreading throughout Europe and they're coming closer and closer this way and they carry some pretty horrible diseases and, and so it's really good to expand from what we've learned with looking at one tick species and then extrapolate that to look at different tick species and to look at other countries.